Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. This is where we look at articles from past issues of Creation Magazine, the flagship publication of Creation Ministries International. All right. What do we have? This is uh, from 2006, volume 28, number three. A ways back. An interesting title. Earth is too special? Too special. I thought it was... Too, too special is a good thing, isn't it? Well, I think so. so. Everybody's looking for the special person in their life or that special latte that they like or something. But anyway, according to this article, some people think the earth is too special. And uh, this is by Dr. Jonathan Sarfati. Um, this is talking about the, the unique blue planet for a second. Earth stands unique in all planetary bodies yet discovered. It's distant from the sun, temperature, uh, range, allowing liquid water and diverse range of organic life point to an intelligent designer who created the world as an ideal place for life. Of course, that's what we would believe as Bible-believing Christians. But, uh, of course, there's a different viewpoint uh, from some people out there saying that, well, there is no God. Yes, there Everything is. just made itself, yeah. including the universe and, uh, and the earth. That's just geological evolution over millions of years, billions of years. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> he starts off and he says, Astronomer Thomas Clark of the University of Central Florida in Orlando recently made an astonishing statement. It's a bit depressing to think that Earth-like planets are too special. That was this gentleman's opinion. It's, it's depressing to think that the earth is too special. Hmm. Um, why should this be depressing? Those who believe that the Bible, sh uh, believe the Bible should be elated. After all, the earth was created first, before the sun, moon, and stars, and was specially designed to accommodate millions of kinds of living things. That's what the Bible clearly says. God created the earth on day one. God created uh, the, sun's, uh, the sun and, and uh, stars on day four. First, one must uh, understand that evolutionary astronomers have excluded a creator by decree and instead believe that our solar system formed by itself. Astronomers agree that the planets and moons of our solar system formed in a swirling disk of dust and gas around the sun. In the inner regions, dusty particles melted and stuck together, forming hot blobs of rock that cooled and merged to make Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. And that's actually a quote from uh, an evolutionist. That is, according to evolutionists, the solar system was born in a collapsing dust, a cloud of dust and gas called a, nebular, a nebula, hence the term nebular hypothesis. Um, probably heard that term before. Most of this uh, collapsed into the sun while the inner planets were formed from fragments that collided and fused together. So again, trying to explain everything naturalistically. Um, this is the, the story. However, the more scientists have investigated this, the more that they've realized there's a problem. There was no reason for the rocky particles to melt, but it would have heated them. If anything, back then the sun would have been cooler than today. Therefore, only a small and very close planet like Mercury could conceivably have uh, become hot enough. But further from this, uh, the sun, they have admitted a problem. While asteroid-sized rocks would have aggregated in the inner solar system, they would not have melted and clumped together to form planets. The solid rocks would just zoom past each other or collide and recoil like snooker balls. Evolutionary astronomers proposed that a supernova explosion within 50 light years from Earth exploded and supplied the nebula with radioactive aluminum-26, which provided heat as it decayed. But this requires a highly unlikely set of coincidences, which is why the chances are remote. However, Dr. Clark couldn't bear the thought of Earth being in a favored place in the universe, even <coughs> in an evolutionary scenario, as shown in the quote at the beginning of the article. It is a great deal to do with the humanistic, atheistic belief that life on Earth, including humanity, just happened. Therefore, they would expect our Earth to be neither specially equipped nor to occupy a special location in the universe, so he prefers to, uh, to believe the above speculative idea. I hear this often, actually. We're not special. You know, we, we're humans, we're people, but really we're just evolved pond scum from billions of years ago that just, you know, this is, this yes. is just a naturalistic yes. uh, uh, viewpoint. The Earth, it's not special. We're just some, we're just a random planet in this huge galaxy, um, unbounded galaxy, if you're a... Yeah, you're or a universe, yeah. yeah uh, universe. Yeah. yeah, you should say universe. Um, and so, yeah, there's nothing really special. We shouldn't consider nothing. ourselves special. Yeah, yeah. And, and if, you know, life evolved here by chance and given the right condition, it's not really that special here. There could be the right conditions for life on many other planets elsewhere. Right. And yet this article highlights that actually the Earth is very special. Right. The, the conditions for life uh, are, are, are here on Earth. And a lot of times I, I even hear people when they say, oh, you, you know, you're creationists, you think you're, you're so special. It's almost like they think we're being obnoxious. Like, well, yeah, I do believe we're in a special place in the universe on a very specially created 
uh, earth and that we were special creations of God. But um, they always make it sound yeah. like, oh, well, you just think you're, you're something special. Um, you know, that's obnoxious or that's, uh, you know, why, why, why do you think that? It's like, well, that's what the Bible says. I don't think I'm, I'm great on my own. I'm only great because of, uh, of what God has done. But um, yeah, what's the, what's the opposite of that? Then either we're special or we're not special. Right. <laughs> right. And we're just evolved animals, which is, of course, what the evolutionists are postulating. We're right. just evolved animals. Why should we? So why should you know, any living thing have more importance than anything else? Or even right. a living thing, why should yeah. it be more important than a non-living thing? If it, we're all just... You could take it back that far, too. Right. We right. all just evolved. I mean, what's the difference between a blade of grass? It reproduces. We reproduce. Yes. Yeah. So we've got a few more smarts or something like that. Spray some herbicide on, on your grass and, and kill you know, hundreds of thousands of blades of grass. That's no different than genocide. Right. That, and, that and type of a scenario. That might sound far-fetched to some people, but actually we've seen dictators in the last 100 years that have applied those, those concepts and, to, to, to society. And Dave, we've done articles in the magazine highlighting some of those things. That's right. Uh, last part here is hidden assumptions in secular cosmology that this denial of Earth's special place goes even further and it underlies the Big Bang Theory itself. Most people don't realize that this theory depends on a philosophical assumption called the cosmological principle, that there is no special place or direction in the universe. That is, the universe has no center and no edge to it. However, consistent with the Bible, we can start from a different assumption, that humanity is special in God's sight and the Earth is our home. Um, does, sh does show evidences of uniqueness, including its location. Both a centered and a centerless universe are consistent with the observation that almost all galaxies are receding from Earth. So the choice is purely philosophical on those grounds. What Dr. Sarfat is pointing out is you don't just go to the evidence and, and, and decide. It could actually be either or. Uh, either or yeah. So philosophically, uh, if you say, well, yeah, we're at the center of the universe, that fits what the observations make. Um, but if you don't like the idea of being special, then you can just say, well, the observations don't necessarily mean that. So you can believe in an unbounded uh, universe. But only the idea that our galaxy is near the center of the universe fits all the evidence, making sense of the quantized redshifts so that a centerless universe has great difficulties explaining. So the conclusion here is, of course, there's nothing depressing about God creating Earth, especially for life, as the Bible says. The genuine scientific evidence, as opposed to unscientific assumptions, is just another confirmation that nothing in real science contradicts the Bible. On the contrary, it confirms the Bible's history over and over again. One of his references here was from New Scientist, and the title of the article was, Earth was a Freak. <laughs> it was a freak. It was a freak accident. We were, you know, it's very rare. It still happened all naturally, of course. Um, Amazing. Think of the think of the, uh, the, the the philosophical, if you will, implications of that. Earth is a freak. Yeah. So this is just a just a chance happening that we're here on Earth discussing these things. And, yeah. And. Uh, well, it's another amazing. one of the, the quotes here was from Edwin Hubble. You, people probably know Hubble, the Hubble telescope, etc. Yes. Um, and he was the discoverer of the expansion of the universe, and he admitted. Such a condition, these red shifts, they're talking about the, the quantized red shifts, would imply that we occupy a unique position in the universe. But the unwelcome supposition of a favored location must be avoided at all costs is intolerable. intolerable. Moreover, it represents a discrepancy with the theory because the theory postulates homogeneity. Which, what he's saying is, wait a sec, the, the evidence appears to make us look special, but we've got to avoid that at all costs. Why? Because he was an atheist. Yeah, the universe Any, should look the same everywhere. Right. It, it, yeah. Anything that points to special points to special creation. And, of course, yeah. that's what uh, the magazine's all about. Check out that uh, article on the website and more uh, to do with the subject.